Right, so we're looking at the 2023 Graphics Junior Cycle paper. Um, we're going to go through all these questions step by step, page by page. Uh, so this being the first video, you'll see question one. Um, this is page two of the exam, obviously page one being the, the general instructions. Um, and we're going to go through, like I said, page by page. So each video will be a different page, each... Um, and then the longer kind of questions will be a video of their own, okay? So like I said, this is question one. We're going to start with 1A. Um, on the left-hand side of your sheet, we have 1A, 1B, and then we have C and D. Uh, questions 1A and B are very approachable kind of uh, maths-based almost um, questions. Uh, they're more looking at your basic graphic uh, principles, basic graphic geometry. Um, and then we have two circular questions then for part C and part D that we'll look at in a second. So we've part 1A, it's asking us to use the list below to identify each of the angles shown on the sheet. Okay, so our list that we have is we have an acute angle, a reflex angle, an obtuse angle, and supplementary uh, angle, supplementary angles, okay? so. In all honesty, um, some of you might have covered this while in uh, primary school. So I know straight away that my obtuse angle is the orange angle there. So I'm putting that in. Um, and what I kind of tell people, especially when you have a list like this, is try to take off the ones or scratch out the ones that you have done. It might kind of clear things up a little bit for you, especially with some more difficult questions. Next one is acute. You know that that's the line of degrees. Cute. Scratch it out. Reflex, like we said, is above 90 degrees, below 180. And then our supplementary angles are two angles that are uh, supplementary. They're supplementary angles. So when we're doing the real one, we have an obtuse angle and an so the next one, next question is asking us to name the polygon shown below. Okay, so naming the polygon, I'm just counting these out, obviously six sides. Uh, so that has to be a hexagon. Okay, and don't be afraid to do that in the exam, definitely count it out if it needs to be, all right? Next thing is asking us to use your drawing equipment to measure the angle A, measure the length L, and measure the radius R in the given probably not a given blow So a habit that I get in or that I kind of get my students to get into is extending the angles out. It's just a little bit easier to measure the um, angles if it is extended out like so. So just draw your line straight through. Make sure that your angle is kind of maintained. You're not you know, you're, you're using a straight edge. And then your line at the center with the zero on the right hand side of my tractor. And I'm going all the way around to the line of it's difficult to see actually when I'm just looking at this, but I'm just measuring around. Okay, so that's me counting out the angles there. That is 140 degrees, so I'm just writing that in for my angle A. So the next one's my length L. All I'm doing is I'm just grabbing my set square and giving that guy a measure out. Okay, so I have it docked as 39 millimeters, so you'll see me counting that out there. 10, 20, 30, 35, and then four little dashes after that's 39 millimeters. So I'm gonna throw my pen on the ground and then when I pick it up and write in 39 millimeters. And, and as we did with the degrees, you know, make sure you're actually using your symbol the same way as you're writing in millimeters with your or your 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 or you're adding your units basically, same as you do it on the side. So the last one is measuring a radius, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my T-square and draw a line through my center line. Now, some of you might realize, actually, we've already kind of drawn in a radius or a line from the center point to our circumference of our circle by doing our angle. In fact, we drew, drew two of them. But I'm just going to highlight this a little bit better because we'll get a better measurement or a more accurate measurement of our radius if we draw a line straight through the center. So I'm going to draw a line straight through the center. Then I'm going to take my uh, set square again. 
Okay, so we're going to move on to question 1C. So this tells you to draw the uh, design for a computer game character. So obviously similar enough to the Pac-Man um, character. Um, and it tells you that it's based on circles. So automatically that should tell us that it is a, uh, a question that revolves around chord bisectors. Okay, so we've um, encountered these before. This is using your chord bisector principle. That states that the bisector of a chord travels through the center of a circle. So if you use two of them, you're gonna go ahead and find the center of the circle. So I'm gonna use this green pen here to draw my first chord. And then I'm gonna go ahead and bisect it. So my, I'm gonna split this up green and orange just so it gets a, a little bit clearer. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and bisect this green line and draw in my bisector. Okay, so simple enough, um, bisecting out of a line. Just make sure um, that you're being very accurate with your uh, the sharp end of your compass. Just make sure that it's actually sitting on the circumference. I think you'll, you'll see me kind of mess around with this now in the next one. Um, but it, if, if, if you're not massively accurate with the, the sharp end of your compass, um, your bisectors will be off, therefore the center of your circle will be off, the question might be off afterwards. Um, so, like I said before, I'm gonna go ahead and bisect the line. We should all know how to do that at this stage, especially in a junior cycle exam. I'm gonna draw on my bisector. I'm gonna to stick to that green pencil as well, just so it's a little bit clearer. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw in an orange cord on the other side of my circle. So these cords could be anywhere. It doesn't, doesn't matter where. Um, especially if you're doing this question yourself. Uh, you don't have to try match my chords or anything like that. These can be anywhere at all. Um, and you might notice that um, I've gone a little bit beyond the circumference of the circle. Um, and again, that's just down to my accuracy. I just find that if you draw that line straight through the circumference either side, you can be a little bit more accurate with the uh, sharp end of your compass um, and with your chords in general. So bisecting my orange line now. And then I'm gonna go ahead and draw in my orange bisector. So where that crosses the green bisector will give us the center of the circle. And you should be able to kind of see straight away or you should be able to, to see um, even just by eyeballing it, that where those two chords meet, it, it like, to me it looks like the center of the circle. Um, so we're onto something there, if that's the case. Um, forgive me, my orange bisector is a little bit faint. Um, so I'm sorry that you can't see that, but um, the rest of the question is gonna revolve around the center anyway, so I'll go ahead and draw in those, uh, the, the horizontal and the vertical uh, diameters now. Okay, so um, you can forgive me, I do promise you my T-square is, or my set squares are lying on my, my T-square and my noggin is out of the way now. So I've just gone ahead and drawn in my center line, uh, my vertical diameter there, and I'm gonna go ahead and draw my horizontal diameter as well. So again, using my dashed line or my center line notation, putting that in. Um, horizontal and vertically as well. So it tells us in the question that um, the, the, the kind of the, the top jaw of Pac-Man's uh, head is at a 30 degree angle. Again, you can forgive me for my head being in the way. And I'm just gonna go in heavy with my trusty black pen here. Um, from the center, out at a 30 degree angle. And again, you can't see it as off screen, but my, uh, my, my T-square is there. Um, my, my set square is sitting on it. Uh, in fact, I'll go ahead and prove it to you now. So I'm gonna stick my 45 degree set square on to the bottom jaw of Pac-Man. Um, so 45 degrees, degree set square is sitting on my T-square there. Um, I'm drawing in that 45 degree line. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take my compass and go around the outer circumference of our circle uh, just to finish it off. I'm not certain if this is needed uh, with the marking scheme and um, we'll know better once that comes out. Um, but it's really just kind of finishing off your your drawing and, and really showing to the, to, the, to the marker or the observer that you kind of know what you're talking about, okay? Um, so I'm going to do that there now. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to find where the radius 10 circle uh, goes. So if we have a look at our question, we have this construction line coming from where the, the upper lip, let's say, of Pac-Man uh, hits the outer circumference of our circle C. So that's just that 30 degree line we drew in. So I'm just going to take that line, across, that point across to our center line, and that's going to give us the center of our radius 10 circle. So you can go ahead and draw in that radius 10 circle now. Um, this is a small radius circle, uh, so it is a little bit um, harder to draw than kind of a bigger circle, let's say, so just take your time with it. Um, anything under kind of 20 mil, you want to be taking your time with it just to make sure it's nice and accurate and you're not lifting your sharp end of your compass off the, the sheet. Um, but that's basically it there now. Um, and that's almost our question uh, finished. Okay, so that's our question uh, 1C finished now, um, and then we'll pop back in um, with question 1D. Alright, question 1D. So, it's telling us that there's a little bowling ball, and it's uh, going up onto this stand here that's shown. We have points P and Q, and it's telling us that the, uh, the ball is um, in contact with those points. So all we're doing is we're taking the radius of the given circle on our sheet, Putting our sharp end at P, swing an arc, and put our sharp end at Q, and swing an arc, and where those fellas intersect gives us our new center of the ball. And then all we're doing is we're just going to go ahead and draw in that circle or that bowling ball, and just double checking that it's hitting P and Q. And then you can switch to your heavy pencil or your trusty black pen if you have one like me, and just go around that in heavy to make sure that you've finished your question. And that's basically all it is straightforward easy marks that will finish our page our first page of our exam uh, page number two so that's the first page of the exam finished um, I will put the links onto this uh, video down below for page number three and the rest of the exams um, and if you have any questions please feel free to comment below and um, we'll see you in the next video